The Final Fantasy VII Remake is unprecedented. While we've recently seen a number of games being rebuilt from the ground up, offering a modern update to an aging classic, none of them come close to the scope or ambition of VII Remake. The City of Midgar, originally a 3-5 hour prologue to Final Fantasy VII, has been transformed into a fully fledged 30-50 hour standalone experience, and it's utterly deserving. Midgar is a fascinating dystopian city, and spending only a few hours there never did it justice. The themes that Midgar represents of human environmental destruction and late stage corporate capitalism are more relevant in 2020 than they ever were back in 1997. But humanity's perpetual descent into an ecological apocalypse at the hand of unmitigated capitalist gain is not the only thing that's changed in the past two decades. Video games have also changed. The technical restrictions faced in the 90s have been all but eliminated, allowing the game to tell its story with so much more grace and nuance. Shit! And just one of the ways that it achieves this is through its music. Remake is an entirely different game to Final Fantasy VII, and thus it requires an entirely different approach to its soundtrack. Square Enix embraced this opportunity to deepen the musical storytelling of the game, with new arrangements of old tracks, new tracks featuring old motifs, and rethinking how music is implemented into the game. It presents us with a unique opportunity to explore how the role of video game music has evolved over the past 20 years. So this is how Final Fantasy VII remade its soundtrack for the modern era. The most obvious change between the two games' soundtracks is its audio fidelity. Although the PS1 could offer CD quality audio on par with modern recordings, Final Fantasy VII's soundtrack was instead created using the PlayStation's internal sound chip. Even though CD quality audio was technically possible, it takes up a lot of space on those CDs, which was needed for other things, such as the game. CD quality audio just wasn't feasible for a game of FF7 size, which was already stretched across three discs. This is not such a problem in 2020. Aside from modern digital instrument samples sounding pretty authentic now, consoles come installed with massive hard drives which have minimised the limitations due to storage, and audio fills a comparatively much smaller space in a game when it looks like this. Remake embraces the symphonic sound that the original could only suggest, with fully orchestrated performances of the classic tunes. However, not every track from Final Fantasy VII aimed for the orchestra. Many leaned into the electronica palette, such as the grimy, bass-driven theme of the slums underneath the rotting pizza. And of course there is Uematsu's love for progressive rock, which underpin the battle and boss themes. These tracks are all given the remake treatment with appropriate arrangements that realise the intention of the original. While the remake enables faithful adaptations of the original's tunes, it also allows for some more creative interpretations. From a dub reggae remix of the track The Oppressed, to whatever hip-hop the chocobo is. These more liberal arrangements are put to great effect with some of the game's recurring motifs. Take Tifa, for example. In the original game, Tifa gets her own theme. That's it. Apart from a quick reference in the ending movement, this is the exact piece of music that plays pretty much every time there's an important Tifa scene.
The first time we see Tifa in the remake, we get a faithful orchestral rendition of her original theme. It feels familiar and comforting. You swell up with love when you see her and hear the music again after all these years. Potentially similar to how Cloud feels having his childhood friend around once again. Not long after, we are treated to a cozy lounge rendition of Tifa's theme, when she mixes a drink for Cloud at her bar, and they have a little chat. This version is more representative of Tifa in her job as bartender of Seventh Heaven. You can almost picture a quartet in the corner of the room playing the song. Finally, much later, we get a high energy EDM version of her theme, when Tifa and Aerith beat up the perverts. These additional arrangements of Tifa's theme aren't as faithful to the original, but they help to flesh out her character and score the different situations she finds herself in. Tifa, of course, is not the only character to be given this treatment. In fact, the use of her leitmotif is rather simple. In particular, there are a ton of variations on the Shinra theme. Though a number of these instances are actually variations on the main battle theme, titled Let the Battles Begin, which features the Shinra motif as a constant reminder of who the enemy is and what you're fighting for. This battle theme, however, isn't actually used in the same way as it was in the original, because combat in the remake has been completely overhauled. There are no random encounters in Seven Remake, and entering combat doesn't transport you to a separate screen. It's all integrated within the field. This is something that Square have been trying to do since Final Fantasy XII, but they've struggled to make it work. In XII, there was no battle screen transition and no change in the music to even establish the fact you're in combat. 13's encounters weren't random, but still sent you to a discrete battle sequence for combat, with its own theme that often got cut off as soon as it was beginning to ramp up. <laughs> and 15 returned to having no screen transition, but queued in a battle track anyway, and the result was a little jarring. Okay. But in Seven Remake, they have finally managed to find a way that flows naturally, by foregoing a traditional battle theme, but dynamically introducing extra elements into the area theme during combat. I won't get into this too much, as there is already an excellent video by 8-Bit Music Theory discussing how they achieved this with the Marco Reactor theme. But essentially, the intensity of these usually rather chill area themes is ramped up in real time by fading in more layers of instrumentation whenever combat is initiated. Seven Remake is certainly not the first game to do this. In fact, it's become quite commonplace but it's just one of the ways that Final Fantasy finally feels modern again. So standard battles no longer have a single dedicated battle theme, but rather we get new battle arrangements of the area themes. Instead, Let the Battles Begin is used in the remake to emphasize the important story battles, but it too receives a bespoke new version for each encounter it's used in, to provide a more curated emotion for that specific fight. So when Cloud gets ambushed by Shinra officers, there is desperation in the track, 
with its rapid drum beat and sharp orchestral stabs. But when he's helping to find and rescue some kids taken by a monster, the same theme takes on a much more mysterious and methodical sound. The boss battles take things even further. Each boss brings a unique twist to combat that you'll need to recognise and counter if you want to take them out quickly, and they will change their strategy at various points as you whittle down their health. The music reacts to each of these new phases in the battle, evolving to match the changing pace of the fight. To illustrate this, we are going to take a look at the most incredible, epic boss battle track in the entire game. I am of course talking about the time you fight a house. The Hell House battle starts off with it bouncing about on its foundations, and its theme leans into the haunted house idea by using an electric organ and almost sounding like carnival music. but it also sneaks in references to Let the Battles Begin. Entering the second phase has the Hell House sprout legs and charge at you, and the music ups the intensity by swapping out the battle theme with the original boss theme, Those Who Fight Further. In its final phase, the Hell House just starts flying about and shooting projectiles at you, and the music responds by going equally as insane, with a roaring electric guitar solo and some choral chanting that's usually reserved for Sephiroth. By the end of the battle, it's just become so extra in the best possible way. Like many of the new tracks in Seven Remake, the Hell House battle theme is built around musical motifs present in the original. But the game also features many tracks with entirely new material as well. Heading up the music of Seven Remake is Masashi Hamalzu, who was first brought onto the Final Fantasy series for X to act as a counterpart to Nobuo Uematsu, complementing him with a more dreamy vibe in his compositions and arrangements. Hamazu would take over Uematsu's position when he left the company, and went on to be the sole composer for Final Fantasy XIII. Seven Remake also has a number of tracks written by Mitsuto Suzuki, who helped out on XIII's two sequels, as well as up-and-coming guest composers and arrangers, such as Octopath Traveler's Yasunori Nishiki. In this way, the music to Final Fantasy VII Remake feels timeless. The collision of Uematsu's melodic craft with Hamalzu's dreamlike soundscapes is actually quite reminiscent of Final Fantasy X, which along with VII is considered to be a major leap forward in the series. In once again bringing together these two composers' distinct styles, VII Remake nicely bridges the gap between the old and new sounds of Final Fantasy's musical identity. And this is true of the game as a whole. The soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII Remake is a perfect little microcosm of the project's philosophy at large. It uses the original source material as a starting point, but fleshes out the story surrounding it and isn't afraid to throw in some wacky new ideas. It mixes the old guard and classic elements with some fresh blood who are able to bring it into a modern step. But most of all, it is a loving ode to Final Fantasy's history that simultaneously sets a new precedent for the franchise moving forward. Just like the original, Seven Remake is once again a turning point for the series, and the best Final Fantasy game we've received in two decades. I can't wait to see where it goes from here.